Welcome back to the channel guys. In this video we are going to take a look at some of the best openings that I would recommend to a brand new chess player or a beginner chess player. These are Grandmaster approved openings that pretty much every expert Grandmaster will say yep these are the best openings for a beginner. I'm going to give you guys a handful of options for white and for black I'm going to give you a couple of options. It's a lot harder to play as black and many students will say yeah, I'm okay with white but I struggle a little bit with black so in my opinion it's better to stick with maybe a couple of openings with black and get really good at those with white you have a few more options so let's go ahead and jump into this number one the best opening for a beginner one of the best is the Evans Gambit and the Evans Gambit goes on to e4 on to e5 you will get your knight out to f3. Black will respond with knight to c6. So we have the Rai Lopez or the Spanish opening. In this opening, the Evans Gambit, we're going to be playing the Italian opening, which is bishop to c4. And from here, black can do a lot of different things. There's some fried liver attacking ideas that some of you guys may have heard about. But in this opening for the Evans Gambit to work, they're going to play bishop to c5. This is called the Gioco Piano opening. And here, this is the starting position for two well-known gambits. One is called the Jerome Gambit. Yes, there is an opening in chess called the Jerome Gambit. Bruh. Right. I'm gonna show you guys the Evans Gambit. The Evans Gambit is we are gonna sacrifice a pawn by playing pawn to b4. Now black has several different options here. Obviously they can take it with either one of their two pieces. They can also retreat. So if they retreat, then we are simply going to castle. And then now if black plays a move like knight takes the pawn, well, e5 is gonna drop and all of a sudden we have a lot of pressure on the f7 square. If uh, we castle and black plays a move like pawn to d6, well, now we can push a4. And now if the knight takes, well, you can say bye-bye to the bishop. We're gonna push a5. They're gonna go here. We're gonna play c3. The knight has to go somewhere, and now we're going to play d5, and see you later, the bishop is trapped. There's nowhere for it to go. Uh, if they take here, we're just going to simply win a piece. If the bishop goes to b4, then we play queen to b3, and that is going to be a good game. They have to defend f7. We can play d5 on the next move, kick the knight out, and see you later to the bishop. If we go back several different moves here, back to this position, Okay, so the Evans Gambit is b4. Obviously, they can take this pawn. If they take with the knight, then that's really what we want. That's the ideal scenario. We're always gonna play c3. We're gonna kick this knight. If the knight drops back to a6, e5 falls. We have pressure on f7. If the knight goes back to c6, this is the ideal scenario. We're gonna push d4. They take, we take, and now the bishop has to go somewhere, it goes backwards, and for the price of one pawn that we have sacrificed, when we sacrifice this b4 pawn, we have a massive, and I mean massive center here. We're controlling a ton of squares, and this is exactly, you can't really draw it up any better than this. Uh, we've got some pressure coming here. The knight can come to g5, protected by the bishop with pressure on f7. We can push d5 in the middle. The knight can't really go anywhere. We can bring the queen to b3. We can castle, push f4, and white is just gonna have a ton of attacking ideas. This is absolutely crushing at the beginner level because we're going to get this massive, massive center. Um, if we go back a couple of moves, the most critical line <clears throat> in the Evans Gambit is after you play b4, the most critical line is if they take with the bishop. This is what black should do. From here, again, we're going to play c3. There are three main options here for black. They can go back to a5, they can go back to c5, they can go back to e7, although you're not going to see that very often. These are the two main critical lines. If they go back to c5, then again, we're going to try to achieve very similar, almost the same, it actually is the same exact position that we just looked at. Even though white's down a pawn, white's going to have very, very good accuracy. That is the Evans Gambit. All right, let's move on to the next one. My favorite opening of all time is the London system for white. The London system is a D4 opening. The London goes D4 and black can respond mainly at the lower levels with knight F6 or D5. Let's say they play D5. We're gonna play the accelerated version of the London system was to immediately jump this bishop out to F4. In the London system, we are going to make a triangle of pawns on the dark squares. Our dark square bishop will be outside the pawn chain. 
So a typical continuation from here might be black develops knight to f6. We can play e3. Let's say they play a French defense type position here, and now we can close in, and now we have our triangle of pawns on the dark squares. We want to put the bishop here in the center. We want to develop the knight. These two squares, we want to castle, and the game can continue from here. A lot of times what you'll see at the lower levels, black will play bishop to d6 and challenge this bishop. You have a couple of different options here. Probably the best option, um, not the one that I play, but the best option is to drop the bishop back to g3. And if they take this, then you're gonna capture towards the center. We almost always wanna capture towards the center. And now we're gonna have some play on the h file. So if white castles here, then we can play bishop to d3. And let's say they play a normal developing move and all of a sudden they're in trouble. And we have this lovely little bishop sacrifice. This is kind of like a Greek gift type sacrifice. Sacrifice the bishop, black takes with a knight, queen a5 and yeah. What do they do here? How do they defend checkmate? If they move the knight back, then that's game over. They're gonna be forced to play f6. We take with the queen, and now the king is running for his life, and white is going to have a very good position. We go back here after they challenge our bishop on d6. What I like to do is to let them just take this. Um, so I, we can just develop normally, and if they take this, we take with the e pawn. And normally we don't like double pawns, but in this case, these two double pawns can be very, very useful because at some point we can push F5 and open up the E file. And I've made a living, me personally, with this and trying to line up all the pieces on the E file. So a typical continuation might be something like this. Uh, Black and Castle, we'll play G3. Let's say they develop, Fianchetta the Bishop, they develop, Weak Castle. So they go rook here, and we line up our rook. And as soon as our rook is on the e-file, we can jump our knight into this e5 square. And if and when they take this, now taking with the pawn, obviously taking with the pawn, taking with the d pawn is actually the best move here. But what I like to do is to actually take with the rook and leave this Meroxy bind on the e5 square. We take with the rook, and now the plan is very simple. We want to line up all of our pieces on the e file. So let's just say they let's just give black some random moves here. So they play something like this. We line up all of our pieces on the e file, something like this. And if they ever hop in here, then obviously that's just a free pawn. They can't really do that. But when the moment is right, we want to push f5 and open this up and just absolutely crush black on the e-file. Have a ton of success in these type of lines in this version of the London system. Another version of the London system, uh, if we go all the way back, is the Jabava version. So the Jabava London is d4, d5, bishop f4. Let's say they develop and we play knight to c3. And let's say they play c5. This is one of the best ways to attack the London system is to play c5 and queen b6, pressure on b2. We first need to insert the move e3. Let's say they play, uh, say they play something like e6. And now we hop the knight into b5. And we need to play the move e3 so that they don't have this check, forking our king and knight and forcing us to go back. But since we played e3, this is not a problem. We can just block with c3 and the knight's not hanging because we played e3. But anyway, in this position, when we go knight to b5, we are threatening, obviously we're threatening this, right? So hopping the knight into c7 with the fork, and this can cause a lot of problems in some variations. Um, in this position, the only way to stop this, they can't play this move because we're double attacking that. So the only way to stop this is to play this very, very sad looking knight to a6 move. Now they can't kick out the knight with a6, and this is a very good, uh, very good line, very good system for white in the London system. Okay, so that is the London. That's just kind of just scratching the surface. This is going to be a fairly short video, guys, so not going to be able to go into too much detail, but those are some different ideas in the London system. All right, next up we have the advanced French. Okay, so the French defense is e4, e, uh, e6. D4, and they hit us with D5. This is the French defense. Best way to play against this as a beginner is to push. This is called the advanced variation of the French. What black needs to do is they need to strike at the center and attack this D4 pawn, so they should play C5. We're gonna back that up with C3. They're gonna develop knight to C6. We're gonna develop knight to F3. Now they're gonna play 
they're going to develop their bishop, and we develop our bishop, and they're going to take the pawn. We're going to take back, and now they play queen to b6. They have two attackers, two attackers on this d4 pawn, and we only have one defender. So you might say, oh, well, let's drop the bishop back, let's protect it, let's do some of that stuff. Got a secret weapon for you guys. It's called the Milner Berry Gambit. We are actually not going to defend this pawn. If white plays this and black doesn't know how to play against this, they can get in trouble. We're going to ignore this. We're going to give it up. We're going to give up a central pawn, which is counterintuitive. We're going to castle. They take the pawn, and we don't even worry about this. We play knight to d2. Now if they take this, thinking, hey, I'll trade. I'm up some material. We take back. And now it's very difficult for black to get at this pawn here. Yes, they're up a central pawn, but white is going to enjoy the fact that black can't really castle long. They don't want to castle into this open C file. And white already has a ready-made attack over here. We're going to, in a lot of these Milner Berry Gambit lines, we're going to push pawn to H4 and pawn to H5. We have our knight coming here to G5, putting pressure on F7, putting pressure on H7. And we're going to have some maybe queen to C2 in some lines. And you'll notice that both of our bishops, if, if and when black castles into this, they're going to be castling right into our bishop pair that's going to be staring at all of this pressure on the king side. So remember that, guys, the Milner Berry Gambit in the advanced French defense. Definitely an opening that you need to check out. Okay, what else do we have for white? Uh, let's go over the Danish Gambit. The Danish Gambit is very good at the beginner level. So the Danish Gambit is e4, e5. We strike in the center with d4. They take that. Normally you'd say, okay, well, let's take back. We're actually going to gambit this pawn. So we're going to play c3. They're going to take this. Now, there are two versions of the Danish gambit. The first one is the more calm, which is this one, where we simply just recapture with a knight. And for the cost of a pawn, we have, we're up development. We've already developed a central pawn and a knight. And this position is roughly equal. That's kind of one of the normal Danish gambits. I'm going to offer you guys the more super ultra aggressive Danish gambit which is after they take the c3 pawn, we don't even take that. We gambit another pawn, and we play bishop to c4. And black's like... <laughs> you serious? They're like, I'm just going to keep taking pawns, bro. They take another pawn. Now we finally take back with bishop b2. So black is down one pawn. White is down three pawns. So white is down two pawns. But you'll notice that we have a ton of pressure and a lot of lines say black develops and a lot of lines we're going to play queen to b3 and we have maximum pressure against black so you already we have pressure on this weak f7 square f7 the f7 pawn is the weakest pawn in black's camp we have the two bishops you guys probably heard don't give up your bishops for knights especially in the early part of games bishops are better than knights a little bit so we have the bishop pair staring down at black and if black doesn't know how to play against this they're going to going to get in trouble very, very quickly Check that one out, the Danish Gambit. All right, let's move on to the Vienna. The Vienna opening for white is e4, e5. And normally we play knight to f3. And we can go into the Ray Lopez, the Italian. But we're going to play knight to c3. And then here, black has three main options. They can play knight to f6. They can play knight to c6. Or they can play bishop to c5. If they play bishop to c5 or knight to c6, we're going to play bishop to c4, we're going to develop, and the Vienna say something like knight c6, we play bishop to c4, let's say they develop, and we can just play pawn to d3, and this is like a reverse London. In the London system, we had a triangle of pawns with a dark square bishop outside the pawn chain. In the Vienna, we have a light square pawn chain with a light square bishop outside the pawn chain. So that's what happens if they play. And then from there, it's just kind of a normal game. You just, you know, get your pieces out. You know, knight f3, you're going to castle, and you're just going to play a normal game and enjoy a pretty nice center. However, at the lower levels, the other option after knight c6 that you may find is knight to f6. And this is where we do, this is where we do our little happy dance. Yes, sir. We love knight to f6. This allows us to play the Vienna Gambit, and that's only after knight to f6. We are going to lash out, boom, with pawn to f4. Now, they don't have to take this. In this video, I'm going to show you what happens if they do take it. So if they accept the Gambit, 
So now this is a very sad night. We're going to push. Okay, we're going to kick this knight. Where does this knight go? It has no safe home. It has to go all the way back. So now you have to remember this move if you don't remember anything else from this opening with the Vienna Gambit. You must, at all costs, you must stop queen to h4 check, or that would be a very, very unhealthy way to continue the game. So we have to play knight to f3 to stop this check. And now we are going to enjoy a very big center, almost no matter what black plays, we're going to push in the center. They play a move like d5. Now we've opened up our dark square bishop. We're going to gobble up this pawn on f4, and we are going to have a fantastic game. We're going to play bishop to d3, possibly bishop to uh, b5. We're going to castle, and the cool thing about the Vienna Gambit is you get rid of your f pawn, and you're going to castle short, and your rook is going to enjoy a semi-open f file. And so there are going to be lots and lots of attacking ideas on this weak f7 square. So Vienna Gambit, guys, remember that one. And the Vienna game itself, even if you don't get the Gambit, the Vienna is a very, very good opening. Okay, the last one I have for you guys for white is Stonewall Attack. I love the Stonewall Attack at the lower levels. It is crushing at 1,000 and under. You can play it up to the 1,500. You can play the Stonewall all the way up to the 2,000, but around 18, 1,900 starts to get a little bit harder to be effective with it. But the lower levels, Stonewall is crushing. Let me show you the setup for the Stonewall Attack. We're gonna put these pawns on all dark squares here in the center. So we literally have a wall. That's why it's called the Stonewall Attack. There is something called the Stonewall Defense where black basically does the same setup on the other side of the board. We're doing it as white. So we set up this wall. Uh, we eat our own bishop with a pawn. We stick our bishop here on d3. We play knight to d2, knight to f3. We get castled and we want to jump our knight into this juicy e5 square. But you'll notice this is almost identical to the London system. The only difference between the London system and the Stonewall attack are these two guys right here. In the London, the bishop is outside the pawn chain, and this pawn hasn't moved yet. This is the London. This is the Stonewall attack. So they're almost identical. One of the main differences is in the Stonewall attack, you have this pawn on f4, and so you want to jump this knight into this, this e5 square, you're going to have a lot of attacking ideas. And one thing that's easier to do in the Stonewall that's not as easy to do in the London is you can do rook lifts. Bring your rook up and over and put a lot of pressure. So a typical game in the Stonewall attack might look something like this. D4, D5, E. No, 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 no. <laughs> Pardon me. Let's try that again. <laughs> Let me load this. <laughs> So a typical opening might look something like this. So we have d4, d5, e3. Let's say they play developed a knight. We play bishop out to d3. Let's say they play this. c3, develop, knight d2, castle, f4, develop, 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 castle, something like this. We jump that knight into this juicy, juicy e5 square at the lower levels. Your opponents will not be able to leave this knight here. They will take this 101 times out of 100. I'm good at probability. We take this in the stone wall. We always take from right to left. We're going to take it this way. This knight has no safe square to go to. It's going to go backwards. And now you can see the power of the stone wall attack. We have queen to h5 coming. We have rook lifts coming. All of our pieces are pointing towards the king side and this is going to be an epic attack. So the stone wall is a very, very good attacking um, option for you. Your king is always gonna be safe, so you have that combination of a safe opening with a super ultra aggressive attack, and so it's just absolutely crushing at the beginner level. Have a uh, stone wall speed run series of videos that we may be able to share with you guys on the channel. All right, so that's it for white guys. Definitely have a good handful of openings there for you guys to try out and experiment. So next up, we'll take a look at a couple of openings for black. Catch you on the next video.